Welcome to Gridbusters. So today we've got something a little bit special, a little bit different, and that is the wiring diagram. So I've had tons of people ask me, could I please put together like some sort of like wiring diagram, show how I've got all, all the solar equipment and everything all set up. And I was going to do it on the whiteboard and then I thought, well, why don't I do it on the computer, like create a, like a diagram on the computer and then I can create like a, a download link for everybody. So if you'd like a download link for the diagram I'm about to show you, there will be one uh, somewhere in the description. Uh, there'll be like a link in the description where you can download a PDF of what I'm about to show you. Now, before we get going, a bis big disclaimer, I'm a terrible artist. I'm no good at drawing. This is one of the things I'm not very good at. I'm, I'm no good at Photoshop or, or any of these types of um, programs or anything out there. And I had to search around to find like a program I could use to draw diagrams. And I found one uh, on a website called diagrams.net. Uh, and maybe there's like much better websites out there if, if you know of any really good like uh, resources out there for drawing circuit diagrams and things like this. Please put them in the comments. It would be I'd be really interested to know. So, uh, so yeah, let's just have a look. So let's just dive straight in. So here we are. This is uh, the full uh, system. Um, and we'll just do this one step at a time. This may look a little bit confusing when you first see it, but what I want to do is just kind of go through in detail how the system works. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom zoom in, and then we can just have a look at like one uh, one section. Uh, and like I said, I do um, apologize for the crudity of this uh, diagram. This is not my forte. Um, I've just done it as best as I could and hopefully it kind of makes sense. Uh, obviously, everything in this diagram is not done to scale. Um, so there are my dis yeah, disclaimers out of the way. So uh, here we go. So we start off with uh, the solar panels here on the right hand side. So we've got, um, you can see here, this is what we call a string of solar panels. So we've got eight solar panels here, another eight solar panels here, and then another eight and another eight here. So these are the solar panels that we have on the roof of the barn. And then in the garage of the barn, we have these what are called solar combiner boxes. So I've got two separate solar combiner boxes. So each uh, string of um, solar panels has a positive and a negative. And the positive goes to the combiner box and then the uh, negative uh, goes to the combiner box as well. So uh, and you can see you can see this is you know, each string. I've, I've done this. So uh, I've just you know drawn the. Uh, the lines here for the circuits uh, as clearly as I can. Obviously, they're not quite laid out like that, but I've just done it just to make the diagram easy to understand. And then if we come down, we can see the same thing with the other two strings. So we have four strings, two combiner boxes, positive and neutral going to each combiner box. Now, inside the combiner boxes, uh, there is uh, what's called a surge protection, which is for, for lightning, uh, lightning protection. And there is also a circuit breaker, and there is also a fuse as well. Now, the great thing I like about these particular combiner boxes is the circuit breaker um, switches the positive and the neutral as well. I found these um, uh, combiner boxes on Amazon, uh, Amazon UK. I couldn't find, there were so many different options in France, and I found some really good ones in the UK. Um, you know, English being my first language, I found it easier to search through. Um, I'll put a link to those in, in the description. I can't find the same ones anymore, so they do have some smaller ones and some bigger ones. They don't have the exact same ones I got because I wanted to get a another one. Um, so I'm waiting for those to come into stock. They don't seem to, I, I don't know, maybe they'll have them um, when you look. Uh, but when I last looked, they didn't have any of the exact same ones. They just had like the single uh, ones for like a single solar string, or if you wanted more solar strings, they had like a bigger, bigger version as well. But uh, yeah, so that, that's why I've got these um, uh, boxes here. The other great thing about having a solar combiner box like this is the fact that it's a convenient way to turn everything on and off. And I did um, contemplate putting in, um, I even bought one, a solar on off switch. You can buy these like, you know, these kind of big switches where you turn the thing on and off. And there was recently a bulletin from um, a YouTube channel, which I watch uh, from the UK. It's a you know, professional solar installers. And there's been a number of fires recently um, in Europe, and they've been attributed to these very you know, switches where you switch the solar panels on and off. Um, so that's why I didn't put those in. And it kind of makes sense. You know, you want to have 
as few connections and think you know as possible and as you know having a, a switch an extra switch in the chain it would have meant that i would have had yet more connections as more things to go wrong if you like and also these solar combiner boxes they have a switch in them already i can turn everything off there so why have a, a, another switch in the chain so that's why i didn't go with that because i know some people were asking how do i turn the solar panels off well it's all done in the combiner box now now, earthing, uh, this is what these uh, green uh, wires are. Um, so we have an earthing point in the ground directly outside the barn. Uh, that goes into like a little junction box here. And then the uh, combiner box is hooked up. Each combiner box is hooked up to the um, earth uh, junction box. And then the solar rail system is also hooked up to that. Now, originally, I was going to hook up the um, the earthing to the, the our breaker panel, um, and that we do have a, a separate breaker panel in um, yeah for, for like our house mains, uh, 240 volt system. We do have a like a, a circuit breaker in the garage, like a full fuse box in there, and that links via a very long cable which goes underground completely separately to the main house. So I was going to hook it up to that and reading through some of the literature, they do say, yes, that is recommended. However, they also do say that in some situations where you have your solar equipment quite a long way from your house, sometimes you can, you, you know, it, it is beneficial to have a separate earthing system. And I know a few people in the comments were saying you should really have your earth closer to your panels. And this is, I mean, I, I can still do it either way, but this is why I put in a separate earthing system right next to the barn, because my thinking is, if it gets struck by lightning, you want the shortest possible route to ground and the quickest possible route to ground as you can get, rather than going through another 30 meters of cable, yeah? Um, I just want to get it into the ground as quickly as possible. So this is why we have two separate grounds in the system. So we have a ground here, and then we have a separate ground in the plant room, which hooks into the main 240 volt system. Let me know your thoughts on that. There's a lot of arguments, a lot of people saying you should do it two different ways. And I know in different countries, they have different regulations here. I, th I believe here in France, you can do it either way. Um, and I know in some countries you have to hook it up into the 240 volt system. Um, but let me know your thoughts. So yeah, so, so that's what we have here. Um, and then um, from the combiner boxes, there are two outputs from each combiner box, which go from the combiner box all the way over to the plant room. So they actually go underground in a special underground trunking, that new underground trunking that we put in a few vid videos back. And in that trunking, it's only DC. So it's only DC in that trunking, um, not AC. And that goes underground into the plant room, and then the cables go directly into the solar um, the solar charge controllers and as you know you know the solar charge controllers these are the things which um, actually charge your batteries um, and then um, we move over to the plant room side of things now this is where things are going to change slightly because I made a big mistake when I was wiring things up in the previous video and I'm going to make another video in the next video or I, I address some of these mistakes and a few you did spot it so when i would so here we have our solar um our solar charge controllers we have our victron inverter and then we have our big bus bar here which is like the links power in and we also have um our uh, shunt here which measures how much power we're using and then we have our batteries down here so um, you can see here we have our um, uh, the AC output uh, comes from um, the inverter here and the inverter is hooked up to the same bus bar here. Now the charge controllers I have hooked up here to the left hand side of the shunt when actually they should be hooked up to the right hand side. It will all still work fine. The only thing is the monitoring won't quite work properly with the shunt. Um, so that's the only thing that won't quite work properly. So in the next video, um, I will just be moving these cables over to the right hand side here of the shunt. So that is something I will be doing. So I will release a separate circuit diagram showing the correct way I'm doing that. I uh, just want to show you how I've got everything hooked up at the moment. So at the moment, the charge controllers, they come out and then they hook into the bus bar here. Um, and then the output from the bus bar here 
uh, just connects directly to the batteries. So the charge controllers can, in essence, if you like, the charge controllers are basically directly connected to the batteries. Uh, and then the uh, we have our, our shunt here, and then which measure is like an electricity meter. It measures the power. Uh, that we're using and then the the same bus bar here the we've got another power in here uh, which connects to the quattro and everything here is earthed and the earth cable comes down here and it links to the main ac earth system now i might do a separate circuit diagram for the ac side of things it's it's um a lot simpler there isn't as much stuff there is you know there is a few, there are a few outputs because we are still going to be connected to the grid uh, we're not back feeding the grid we're just using um uh, we're having what's called a grid fallback system so we'll just use the grid power when we don't have enough solar so if we have like three or four days in the middle of winter or a whole week in the middle of winter where it's just like you know dark and gloomy for an entire week and we don't have any sun at all then we can still use the grid it's like having a backup generator and then if we just have a little bit of sun then we can kind of like mix that all in still so and um, we still can use the grid as a backup only so we still have a grid connection and so we will have a, an ac input coming into um, the uh, uh, quattro here so we can still charge the batteries from um, the mains if we don't have enough solar power and then the quattro will have two ac outputs um, and i'll put this all in the in the ac diagram when i do that um, and we, we've got two ac outputs so that we can have um, all of our house powered off AC um, output number one and then AC output number two is all the high draw loads so things like um, our electric heating um, our electric hot water heater things like that and that way if we had like a let's say a um, another you know three or four day power cut in the middle of the winter we wouldn't suddenly use all of the battery power <laughs> in like you know in 20 in one 24 hour period we wouldn't like waste all of our battery power uh powering our electric heating um in the middle of the night let's say so uh, let's say there's a power cut in the middle of the night you can actually program it to say look if there's a power cut in the middle of the night just turn off all of the electric or the high current load so all of the heating hot water all of that kind of stuff you know turn all that off so we don't waste electricity and then if we wanted to we could turn that on manually so it's kind of like a, a safety uh, system we can program that second output to only activate during certain circumstances if that kind of like makes sense but i'll probably make a separate video on that and i'll certainly do a separate um, circuit diagram so yeah really quick video today let me know your thoughts on this i will amend uh, the circuit diagram here slightly um, uh, I'll, I'll probably do a, a second download for that but i'll put a link to where you can download that that uh, pdf this pdf document Hope you found that useful. Let me know your comments on the system, how I can improve it. I think I will be putting uh, another 16 panels. Um, uh, you know, I might even do 19 panels. I'm thinking of doing two more strings of panels, but maybe doing them as nine panel strings. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, so that is something we, we probably will do once we've got everything commissioned and live so maybe in the middle of the summer or towards the end of the summer i think we will we will be putting up more solar panels and we certainly will be putting up um creating you know putting more batteries in my plan is as soon as we've got the system live actually is to order the components for two more batteries which will bring it up to 60 kilowatts and then towards the end of the year i want to get four more batteries in so then we bring the system up to 120 kilowatts and i think at that stage 120 kilowatts that's great you know for the next year and then um maybe next year we can then throw in another 50 or 60 kilowatts but we'll, we'll see how the battery situation goes the great thing about batteries is the price of batteries is falling like a stone literally in the last six months the the battery costs have gone down like 15 20 percent um, so I'm, I'm thinking that probably by, you know, this time next year, there might be half the price, um, which is fantastic. It's great for you guys as well. So, you know, if, if I can get, you know, another hundred kilowatt hours of battery for, you know, a few thousand 
uh, um, euros, why not? Why wouldn't I do that? So, you know, uh, it, it kind of like makes sense. And we've got the space for it. You know, the more batteries we have, the better. And the more solar panels we have, the better as well, because in the middle of the winter, we are using about 100 kilowatt hours of, batch of, of power per day. So it's like a big system. Anyway, let me know your th thoughts. I am rambling a bit. Sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Keep those comments com coming. If you want to see updates to these videos, please subscribe. That helps the channel out. It also tells uh, you know, YouTube that you like the video and helps suggest these videos to other people. So it really helps out if you like and subscribe. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave it there and um, I'll catch you next time.